Today we're going to talk about what to pack for the Canadian Armed Forces Basic Military Qualification and Basic Military Officer Qualification for the Naval Reserve. Let's get into it. I'm going to start with the Basic Military Qualification Officer Kit List because the Naval Cadets are required to wear both their Naval Combat Dress and CADPAD, the green Army style uniform. The non-commissioned members will only be wearing naval combat dress. The most important thing is to follow your own kit list. Let's get through it. Now I watched a bunch of how to pack for basic training videos on YouTube before I started this today as research and one of the main themes was that you don't need to take a lot because everything's going to be issued to you when you get there. However, with the Naval Reserve Basic Military Qualification being done in modules, you will have already been issued the majority of these items, so you need to make sure that you bring all of them to the residential portion of your training. As I said in an earlier video, if you want to avoid being stressed out on the plane, worrying if you forgot anything, I like to have a printed copy of the kit list in front of me. I got my kit bag and my barrack box, and I'm only going to check off items when they're physically in my bag, and then I can have a stress-free flight, not worrying if I forgot anything. And I'm gonna go in the order of the kit list here. So item number one is the Cad Pat Windbreaker. This jacket is aptly named the Windbreaker because I gotta tell you, it's not as good, it's not as waterproof as the Navy version. One thing to note right off the back is that all these items are gonna have a label with a code for the clothing item and the actual code for the clothing item is indicated on the kit list. So you can double check that the item you're putting in your bag matches the item on the kit list. Now I don't have a particular fancy way of storing my items in my kit bag. I'm just going to go through the list and stuff them in there the best I can. If I need to do some rearranging, I'll figure it out. Item number two, TW Hot Weather Trousers Cat Pat. These are the rain pants that go with the windbreaker. As you can see, we got our Cat Pat trousers here. Perfect. Item number three, we're getting into boots. All right, let's go through all the detail on the boots because there's a lot of different kinds of boots and you want to make sure that you have boots that are going to work for you. So first of all, because you're in the Navy, you may not be issued Army combat boots. You are authorized to wear your Naval Sea boots with the Cat Pat uniform. I still have my Army combat boots from my basic training. Gave me a little touch-up polish here. They're still in pretty good shape, so we're going to pack those. Now those are 17 years old and because I'm an instructor and I'm going to be there for two months, not just three weeks, I was eligible under the Canfor Gen for boots to purchase some civilian uh, combat boots and I went with these ones here. They're going to be lighter weight, more breathable and hopefully more comfortable to wear. So I'll probably be wearing these for most of the course. The next two options we have for boots here are the boot safety hot weather and the boot safety black sea boots. These are the two naval combat dress boots. Each of these are going to have advantages and disadvantages. Your hot weather boots are a little bit lighter, they're more breathable, and they have this really nice side zipper for quickly getting them on and off. However, these boots are not waterproof. That goes along with being cooler and more breathable, right? Your black sea boots, these are going to be waterproof. These are great boots. I've worn these for the majority of my career. The only complaint is that they're going to be a little bit warm on your feet on those hot summer days. You might want the more breathable summer boots. However, these ones will keep your feet dry if you're in the field and you're in the rain or you're marching through some swampy areas. So you must bring two pairs of boots out of the different selections that we've offered here. However, it's very important to note that at least one pair of those boots must be appropriate to wear with your naval combat dress. So you need at least one of the black sea boots or the black summer sea boots to wear with your NCDs. You are authorized to wear the NCD boots with CAD pad, but you're not authorized to wear combat boots with your NCDs. Next up, we've got our hat CAD pad temperate or more commonly referred to as the Tilly hat. Item number five, three pairs of Cad Pad trousers. One, two, three, in the bag. While I was digging around for my belts, I found the uh, back piece for the Tilly hat. This velcros to the back of the Tilly hat to uh, protect your neck from the sun. Okay, now we've got our black belt logistic unicorp. So this belt is worn with the NCDs and it is also worn with the Cad Pad. So you need this for both. However, there's also an option for the Green Army Combat Belt, which can be worn with your cat pad. You won't necessarily be issued this belt, but if you are, you're allowed to wear it with your cat pad. Next up, shirt, cat pad, times three. One, 
two, three, good to go. Next up, we've got the fleece sweatshirt cat pad. This is probably my favorite clothing item of all the things we have in our kit. These fleece are super warm and cozy. And even though it's gonna be hot summer, uh, at night in the field, especially if you're going in August, it can start to cool off and it'll be nice to have something warm to wear. It doesn't look like the fleece pants to go along with the cat pad sweater is on the kit list, but I have it and I like them, so I'm gonna bring it. Next up, we've got neckwear cover cat pad. I had to check the number on this one to make sure I had the right one. It's kind of like a neck warmer. Even on a cool night in August, I can't imagine needing to wear this, but it's on the kit list, so it's going in my bag. All right, next we've got gloves. So on here we have gloves, combat, temperate, cat pad. Next up we've got our beret. So the black navy beret is gonna be worn with both the naval combat dress and the cat pad. Cap, knit, C, black. That's your toque. Next up we've got five black t-shirts. So these will be worn under both your naval combat dress and your cat pad. One, two, three, four, five. All right, let's talk socks. So there's three different kinds of socks, actually four. You also have white ones, but we're not wearing whites on this course, so you don't need your white ones. You've got your socks, temperate charcoal gray. So this is not them. These are the winter socks, and you won't need these at all. So you have these socks, don't bring them. These are the temperate charcoal gray socks, five pairs. You're also gonna want your black socks. This can be worn uh, in your sea boots when you're on parade, in your naval combat dress on those hot days. A little bit thinner sock, a little bit better for you in the summer. Okay, next up we've got our name tags. So for the cat pad, you need these green ones with the black writing and the anchor. That's what we wear in the Navy when we're wearing cat pad. Now, you'll have to order these name tags and you might not receive them in time for the course through the military system. It can be pretty slow. So you can order these through a civilian provider. Um, I'll link the website in the description. You'll have to pay for them yourself and you won't be reimbursed. Uh, I ordered a couple and then mine did end up arriving on time, so I have double, but uh, nothing wrong with that. It's always nice to have lots of name tags so you can leave them on your different articles of clothing. You're not constantly taking them off and putting them back on again. Uh, so I've got some name tags. Next up, we've got our unit ball cap. So you're gonna be issued a ball cap with the name of your home unit on it. It's really important that you bring all the different orders of headdress on the kit list because your platoon needs to be uniform. So if one person is missing their ball cap, everybody's wearing berets. And the ball cap is really a nice item to have for the Navy. I don't think that the Army really has anything comparable because the Tilly hat is usually only worn in the field. Uh, this is really nice just to have a ball cap. You, you got the rim of the hat to keep the sun out of your eyes and you avoid that perfectly horizontal beret tan that you're all gonna get on your forehead if you're wearing berets the whole time. Uh, so the ball cap is great. Make sure you don't forget it. Okay, moving on to naval combat dress. So you need three pairs of trousers. Now there are separate men's and women's trousers, uh, but I'm pretty sure that you're able to wear either. So if you're a female and you prefer the men's trousers to the women's trousers for comfort and fit and stuff like that, uh, you're welcome to wear that. So I have my three pairs. Next up, we've got the naval combat shirt. So for the naval combat shirt, your name tag needs to be sewn on. So unlike the cat pat where it's Velcro, you gotta sew your name tags on. If you wanna get the name tag just right, looking really sharp, sewn on there well, I recommend you take it to the tailor. So again, this is one of those reasons why you gotta get prepping way in advance. You need time to get your name tags issued and get to the tailor and get them sewn on there. If you don't have time to get them done at the tailor, you gotta do it yourself. And uh, it's a lot of work to make it look really nice like this. So I recommend taking your shirts to the tailor. Next up, we've got the Naval Combat Jacket. So for this, couple things to remember, you gotta make sure that you bring lots of epaulets. These guys with your rank on it right here. It's a real pain if you have to be taking epaulets off of one shirt to put them on another shirt or put them on another jacket. So as many epaulets as you can get them to issue you, take them. Uh, a couple other things here. You're gonna need your uh, naval ensign and you're gonna have to make sure that you have the Velcro sewn onto your jacket. Your jacket might not come with the Velcro, so make sure you have your Velcro there so you can stick it on. And then you're also gonna have your unit patch. So make sure that you have your unit patch sewn onto your jacket. Or the unit patch can also come in Velcro, and then you'll need to sew a Velcro patch onto your jacket and stick the unit patch on that way. The next item on the list actually is the epaulets, and it says here you just need five. Uh, so that would be like one for your rain jacket. It just has the one in the center, and then like two for your combat jacket 
and then two for the shirt underneath. That would be the absolute minimum. Again, I recommend asking for more of these if you can get them. The less switching around your applets you have to do, the better. Next up, we've got our ballistic eyewear. So you may or may not be issued ballistic eyewear. If you're not, don't worry about it. You'll be provided with eyewear when you're there on the course. Uh, however, if you can get it issued, I'd say go for it uh, because I prefer the issued eyewear to the safety goggles that you'll get on the range. And you get a nice carrying case, little pouch, cleaning cloth, all the stuff that goes with it. That's really nice. Next up, you're gonna need to bring masks. Now, policies are changing all the time with regard to COVID-19, we all know that. So just make sure you have them and we'll see what happens when you get there. You don't necessarily need to have these green issued masks. You can wear any solid colored mask and you can also wear disposable masks. But just because they're on the kit list here, it says minimum of three, make sure you bring at least three reusable solid colored masks. Okay, next up we've got Coat Combat Cad Pat Ice. So this sounds to me like uh, the winter jacket. I don't have this with me, I might have it at home. I'm gonna double check the serial number on this. This is why we do the kit list. I'm missing something. So uh, double check that you have the two different CAD pad jackets that are on the list. You probably won't need a winter jacket on a summer course. However, again, it's very important that you bring everything on the kit list. That's just the way it works. There's another item on here I don't have, sweatshirt combat ice. I'm not sure what this item is. Anybody in the army, down in the comments, let us know what I'm missing here. Sweatshirt Combat Ice 920-88XX. I don't have that one. That was everything for the basic military officer qualification. Now we're moving on to the basic military qualification for non-commissioned members. So non-commissioned members need all the same naval combat dress items we already checked off. The trousers, the black undershirts, the naval combat shirt, Naval combat jacket, and that brings us to jacket wet weather. This one right here. I love the Navy rain jacket. This thing is super waterproof. Better than the Army one, I would say. This is a great jacket. To go along with that, we've got the Navy wet weather pants. These are great as well. Super waterproof, keep you dry. The same black belt that we checked off earlier. The same beret that we checked off earlier, unit ball cap we checked off earlier, black toque we checked off earlier, black wool scarf. So for the non-commissioned members, you will be wearing naval combat dress, including in the field, because you're not wearing cat pat at all. So we have a couple of Navy items that weren't on the officer ones for staying warm in the field, like the black scarf. Gloves, black Navy gloves. And we've got all the same options for socks that we already talked about. Check off your socks. And then for boots, when I went over those four pairs of boots in the beginning, two pairs of combat boots, two pairs of navy boots, you need, again, two pairs of boots total. So you could bring either, depending on what you're issued, two pairs of the black sea boots, or two pairs of the black summer boots, or one pair of each. Any of those combinations will be fine. We've got our navy name tag. I got mine here. And my rain jacket. So these are the navy ones, black with gold writing. Make sure you get a couple of those. Those are the Velcro ones. And then, as I mentioned before, with the Naval Combat shirt, you're gonna have the non-Velcro ones that need to be sewn on. And again, you've got your Navy epaulets. So this is the rank of Petty Officer Second Class. Yours are gonna be Sailor Third Class. So they're gonna be blank, just black with the gold Canada. Next up, we've got our personal requirements list. This list is gonna be the same for both officers and non-commissioned members, and I'm gonna go through some of these items pretty quickly. So you've got your toiletry bag, plastic soap dish, soap bar, plastic toothbrush case, make sure you have a case for your toothbrush, your toothbrush, toothpaste, dental floss, razors with blades, and for razors, it has to be a standard disposable razor. You can't bring a straight razor or anything like that. That could be considered a weapon. Shaving cream or gel can, unscented deodorant, shampoo and conditioner, laundry soap and fabric softener. So you're gonna only be there for three weeks. You're gonna be doing laundry frequently, probably like every second day, but you don't need a giant jug of laundry soap. That's just gonna be a big heavy thing that's gonna take up space in your luggage. It's good to bring some of those individual pods or a small powder form container. There's different options. Don't bring a two liter jug of laundry detergent. You don't need it. 
plain face cloth, hand towel, and bath towel. And make sure you bring those and all three, just like it says on the list, because you're probably gonna have to have them out on display, hanging in a certain way for your inspections. Baby wipes or wet naps. These are important for a couple different reasons. Number one, when you're out in the field, you're not gonna have access to showers, so you might wanna kinda spot clean a little bit. Uh, number two is when you're out in the field and you do camouflage paint on your face, it can be hard to wash it off. Baby wipes are perfect. I have some alcohol wipes here. This I wouldn't recommend. You want maybe something a little gentler if you're gonna be you know, rubbing camo paint off around your eyes and stuff like that. Baby wipes are the best for that. Sewing kit, it's very important to have a sewing kit. When I did basic training, we had to kit mark every single item of clothing, including individual socks. Now, I don't think you're gonna have time to do that in your three week course, but you will need a sewing kit if you need to sew a name tag on or item, other items like that. Shoe shine kit, now on the list here, it has black kiwi shoe polish. Black kiwi shoe polish, looks like this. Polishing cloth. Kiwi cloth. Boot brushes, soft brush and stiff brush. So you need one brush for applying the polish and another brush for brushing it off. Another thing that's not on there for your boot polish kit is a toothbrush. You're gonna need this to get down in between, right around the edge of the boot, on the soles of the boot. It's hard to get in there with the brush. Strongly recommend having a toothbrush. Lint brush, this is super important. In your naval combat dress, your black pants and your naval combat jacket is just a magnet for all different kinds of lint, hairs, things like that, and you'll get picked up on inspection. You might need more than one of these, right? You're gonna be constantly cleaning yourself with a lint brush. Four solid padlocks. You need a padlock for your barrack box, you need a padlock for your locker. It says here you need four of them. It can't be like a little small luggage lock. It can be either a combination lock or with a key. There's pros and cons to both. Combination lock might take you a second longer when you're really quickly trying to change and access your kit. But the key one, you have to remember to have the key on you all the time or you're gonna be changing clothes. Oh, it's in the pocket of my other pants. That could be a problem. So you gotta weigh the pros and cons and decide if you're gonna go for the key or the combo or try mixing and matching. Next up, we have a watch. I talked about this in my other video. You want an inexpensive digital watch. So you don't want a nice watch that's expensive that you're worried about getting dirty or damaging. You're gonna be crawling through the mud, doing the confidence course, all that stuff. And you also don't want a smart watch that again, it's valuable. You don't wanna be doing that. But the other reason is that it will be a pain to be having to charge it all the time. So you want an inexpensive watch that's gonna run on a built-in watch battery that's gonna last forever. Um, that's your best way to go. Next up, plastic hangers, another item that I don't have. So plastic hangers, I did talk about this in my other video. Uh, you're going to have certain items in uniform that will be hung um, next to your bunk on display for inspection. So make sure you bring some plastic hangers. Safety band for your glasses. If you wear glasses, make sure that you have a safety band. Bottle of water. You are gonna be issued a canteen upon arrival, but Make sure that you have a civilian bottle of water, even just for traveling, right? And uh, there might be other times when you need it. Another item on the list here, phone cards. So this was a big thing. When I went to basic training, I remember scratching off the numbers on the back, doing all my, my calls home with the phone card. That's probably um, not as big of a deal these days. Most people have uh, national calling uh, on their cell phone plans, at least I do. But if you're worried about long distance charge, you might wanna have some prepaid phone cards so that you can call home. Okay, next up we have some accessories for hair. You can bring hair elastics. They must be the same color as your hair if worn. Bobby pins as well as hair net if required. Also make sure to bring any female hygiene products that you need. I talked with some of the instructors there and there will likely be a chance for you to go to the Canex, the store on the base, to buy any important personal items that you may have forgotten, but it's not gonna be on the first day. Uh, it might be some time before you get there, and your time is in general gonna be extremely limited. So do your best to bring everything that you're gonna need for the duration of the three-week course. For civilian clothing, you're gonna need a seasonal jacket. For men, you're gonna need a polo or dress shirt with a collar, something presentable, and for women, a casual sweater or blouse. So when you arrive, to your basic military qualification, you have to be within the civilian clothing dress code. So nothing, no ripped jeans, nothing with any big bright logos or anything like that, just something casual and presentable. You'll want to bring a sweater or a hoodie to make sure that you're warm in different conditions, casual dress pants, 
casual dress shoes are all the types of things that you're going to need to be wearing um, when you present yourself in civilian attire. Next up, we've got shower sandals. This is really important. They're going to be shared shower facilities. You want to make sure that you protect your feet. And last item for civilian clothing is says here, shoes for walking outside. So comfortable shoes that you're comfortable walking in. All right, sports clothing for PT. So it says here, sweatpants. I think that athletic pants are fine as well. This is what I'm bringing. Um, but they won't want any tight-fitting yoga pants. Next up, we've got athletic jacket, sweater, or warm-up. I would say you should bring two items. So I'm bringing a waterproof jacket that I don't mind running in. You're gonna be doing PT in the morning, rain or shine. I've got a nice warm-up sweater here as well. If you're going out in the morning or the evening and it's a little cool and it's not raining, nice to have a sweater. Got my jacket here that I mentioned before got gym shorts, I've got my track pants, I've got a short sleeve athletic shirt, and I've got a long sleeve athletic shirt. It's nice to have different options for PT, again while packing as light as you can so that you can be comfortable in different weather conditions doing PT. I also found my black digital watch from earlier, it was in my gym bag, so I've got my watch, that's good. You're also going to need five pairs of sports socks, and you're going to need your running shoes or gym shoes. Now one point about the shoes is again, you don't want to bring like some brand new Air Jordans or shoes that you're going to worry about getting damaged. You're going to be running in the morning in all different kinds of conditions, and your shoes are going to get dirty. So wear some gym shoes that uh, you're not too worried about the conditions that they're going to be in. Bathing suit is important. You need your bathing suit for the swim test. For women, the bathing suit must be a one-piece swimsuit. Next up here, we've got a minimum of five pairs of cotton underwear, it says, and it says no G-string, so underwear must be conservative. And for women, you're also gonna need sports bras. All right, that does it for the kit list. So this next section, I'm gonna mention a couple items that aren't on the kit list that I think might help you. So this could be valuable to have some insight into a couple of things that are not mandatory, but might help you out. All right, first tip that's not on the kit list is to have either a headlamp and or flashlight. We're all pretty accustomed these days to using the flashlight on our phone. However, you're not gonna have your phone with you the majority of the time. So at night in the field or in the barracks, it could be useful to have another light source. All right, next let's talk sunglasses. So there's definitely gonna be times where you're not authorized to wear sunglasses, like if you're on parade. However, there are gonna be times when you can wear sunglasses with your uniform. However, you have to make sure you're within the dress regulations. So what you want is a nice pair of plain black sunglasses. You cannot have mirrored lenses and you cannot have bright colors. You're not gonna have any problem with a tiny little Ray-Ban logo like I got here. Uh, you're not going to get in trouble for that, but anything too flashy and especially those big reflective mirrored lenses, you're not going to be allowed to wear them. Next suggestion is ear protection. So you're going to have to wear hearing protection when you're firing the weapon. And yes, you will be issued uh, either ear covering or disposable earplugs. However, if you have nice custom fitted ones like I do here, uh, you should bring them or even just a slightly better pair uh, that you can reuse. It's nice to have your own hearing protection. This is a good one. So you're going to be in a modular tent with eight to 10 people and there's only going to be, I've been told, four electrical outlets. So when you get that well-earned phone time for a couple hours on the weekend or an hour in the evening, um, you don't want your phone to be dead and you're all going to be fighting for those outlets. So it's a really good idea to bring just a really small mini power bank with a more than one USB outlet. You bring one of these, people can share it, everyone's going to be happy, it's going to help you out. A couple other items for the naval cadets who are going to be wearing the CAD pad that weren't mentioned on the kit list but are very important. Number one, boot bands. You need boot bands around your ankles at the top of your boots to help blouse your uh, CAD pad trousers. That's really important. And then also, if you can get them when you're getting your name tags and everything like that issued, these nice little Velcro Canada flags, they go on the shoulder of your uniform. We already talked about the slip-ons, the epaulets, but I will mention something important here to add to that. There's two different kinds. So the CAD pad uniform, there is a new version which has Velcro in the front. So if you have the newest version, which could be possible because you would have probably very recently been issued your uniform, you got to make sure that you get the Velcro ones that's going to stick onto the front. 
or if you have the older ones like I do, then you have the slip-ons, the slip-on like this and buttoned up. So make sure that you have the correct type of epaulette for your uniform. Something I like to have as an instructor is a first aid kit. Now there's obviously going to be first aid kits out there. You don't need to bring a big first aid kit like this. But if you have issues with your feet with blistering or if you're not sure, if you haven't done long distance marching before like that, it's very common to get blisters. So it's really important to bring mole skin or other blister remedies to take care of your feet. Another item, it must have been on the list, maybe I just missed it, is a laundry bag. You need to have a laundry bag. Again, you're going to be doing lots of laundry, you're going to be going out and getting dirty every day and you got to have your uniform clean for inspection and you want to be clean too. So it's going to be a lot easier to frequently be doing your laundry if you have a nice mesh laundry bag. An absolutely essential item is your travel package. So your travel package you will get at your home unit. It's going to have your flight itinerary, all the instructions, everything that you need to know and all the documentation for you going on your training course. So make sure you bring this and make sure you have it accessible, not buried deep in your luggage because you're going to need to present it immediately upon arrival at CFB Valcarche. All right, so let's talk prohibited items. Obviously, you're not allowed to bring any firearms or edged weapons. So you cannot bring a knife or a multi-tool that has a knife. You can't bring any scissors because that could be considered an edged weapon. However, the very small little scissors that come in your sewing kit is okay. You're not allowed to bring any alcohol or drugs, obviously, and all of your luggage, all your baggage, everything you bring will be searched upon arrival. So don't bring any prohibited items. Don't try to sneak anything in. You can't bring any non-prescribed medicine. So if you are on a medication that you have a prescription for, you need to bring that copy of the prescription with you or else it could just be, you know, unidentified pills. So if you have a prescription that you need, you absolutely need to bring the authorization to have that prescription. You're not allowed to bring any food, beverages, snacks, multivitamins, supplements, anything of any kind. You will be provided with all the food that you need. You're not allowed to bring anything. You're not allowed to wear any jewelry, okay, except for your wedding ring. So, and for earrings, you're allowed to have studs if you have your ears pierced, but you can't have any hanging earrings, no necklaces, bracelets, any other jewelry like that. You're not allowed to have any electronics other than your phone, no radio, no iPad, no stereo, iPod, any handheld gaming systems, anything like that. So before filming this video, I had a long conversation with one of my coworkers, a good friend of mine, who was out teaching for the first half, May, June, uh, and I picked up some tips from him that I'll pass on to you, and also to make sure that all the information that I'm giving you is as accurate as possible. For non-commissioned members, your course is only three weeks, so you really can be very limited in the civilian clothing that you bring, only the ones mentioned on the kit list. For Naval Cadets, for the basic military officer qualification, it is possible that with your five-week course, if you do well and there's no serious infractions, everyone's on good behavior, you may be awarded a couple of days off near the end of the course. So you might want to bring another change of clothes. You actually may be allowed to go off the base uh, overnight, perhaps even for a full weekend. Yes, you are allowed to bring cigarettes and or vapes. So if you're a smoker, you're allowed to bring your cigarettes and a lighter. And that actually brings me to another point that I forgot earlier, but this is a great tip, is that even if you're not a smoker, you can bring a lighter because when you get a new uniform issued and you put it through the wash the first couple of times all little bits and threads and things might start coming off of it sometimes if you pull them it only gets worse you might not have any scissors to snip them just burning those little threads off with the lighter is a good way to get rid of them if you have any over-the-counter medication that you want to bring for example like a Tylenol you cannot have an open container because other things could be in there right if you have a brand new still in the package thing of Tylenol, you will be allowed to take it. I mentioned before when I was talking about razors that it had to be a disposable razor. Yes, this is true. You can't have a straight razor or anything like that, but you are also allowed to have an electric razor. You're allowed to shave your face with an electric razor. Okay, last thing here, we're almost done. We're gonna talk about the arrival day and what to expect. So first of all, you're gonna check in at the reception tent and you're going to present your travel package with your route letter, all that documentation that we were talking about. Make sure you have your ID, make sure that you have everything in the documents section of the joining instructions ready to go. And you're gonna be signing the policies. You're gonna be given the alcohol policy, the cannabis policy, the non-prescription drugs policy, the discrimination and harassment policy. You're gonna acknowledge and sign all these policies to make sure that you're gonna comply with all the rules for the duration of the course. You will then proceed to kit list verification. So. 
you are going to go through everything that you brought and make sure that you didn't forget anything. Every single item on the list will be checked that you have it. That's why I did this video. So you can make sure that you have everything you need because it's not going to be a good start to the course to show up missing important kit. So it's important to label your kit. It's a good idea to bring a black Sharpie so you can write your name on things. Also for your kit tag, there's a spot here where you're going to want to put a name tag in, slide in there, a piece of paper with your name, the last three digits of your service number and any contact information. And one other tip is there's going to be times when your kit bag gets thrown on a truck with 20 other kit bags that look exactly the same. So what I'd like to do is take a piece of colored tape or something else identifiable, even just a piece of blue tape or a couple different colors, something that's identifiable so you can spot yours without having to read 100 name tags. Something to make it stand out is a good idea. And that's it. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you have any further questions, you can ask them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Also, I'm packing my stuff and we just got these new hats in. So if you can let me know in the comments, which one do you think I should bring? This is my Naval Reserve hat I've had for a few years. I like it a lot. I think it looks good, but we just got these brand new Royal Canadian Navy hats in. I'm thinking about bringing one of these. What do you think? Which one's better? Let me know down in the comments. And we'll see you on basic military qualifications.